Hello and welcome to Vintage Sky. Today I'm going to tell you about a construction which was so easy to fly that it was not brought into production. Today's airframe is the HWL Pegas, the Pegasus. Its name is pretty obvious. If you add wings to a horse, you achieve a Pegasus. In this case, we've had wings added to a boxy pod and it was also a Pegasus. In 1945, the Department of Civil Aviation in Poland issued a competition which was meant to find out an easy-to-build economical airframe which would be used for training glider pilots to become airplane pilots. This airframe was called a motor glider but it was not literally one because uh, the assumptions called for a little heavier airplane than a motor glider Eventually it was 84 pounds heavier than, than the motor glider. Uh, it was not meant for soaring in the mountains, for ridge flights, and it re really required very strong thermals in order to perform thermal soaring. So it was more of a low capacity engine airplane than a motor glider. But nevertheless, it is still called a motor glider. 17 competitors entered the competition Eventually 11 were chosen and the winning one was the HWL Pegas. Its constructor was engineer Tadeusz Chyliński and later plans were made in cooperation with Bronisław Żurakowski. The first Pegas motor glider was built by HWL Works. This is Harcerskie Warsztaty Lotnicze in Warsaw. This name means something like Scout Aircraft Works. Uh, but here it's worth mentioning that uh, scouting movement in, in Poland is called harcerstwo and it is pretty much unique compared to other countries because Polish scouts or harcerze um, are within a formation which has um, strict uniforms, which has military-like uh, discipline and, and it is uh, more of uh, more... It can be called more a paramilitary movement than, uh, than in other countries. Anyway, um, there are groups or troops of scouts in Poland who have different specializations and uh, among them there are air scouts who had uh, like a big model making center and this was the HWL. Pegas was the first airplane capable of carrying live pilot uh, which was built by HWL. Later the production was moved on to another works, which was called Okręgowe Warsztaty Lotnicze. This means the regional aircraft works of Gotsław region. And metal parts were built in uh, uh, CSS works in Okęcie. Pegas was completed in 1949 and brought into test flights. Its wooden construction was built around the hexagonal central pod, which accommodated pilot and engine, then it had wings with slots in front of the outer ailerons. It had two tail booms connected by the horizontal stabilizer and the whole construction was covered in plywood and canvas. The single seat cockpit accommodated pilot with a backpack parachute. This was a change made during tests because initially it was meant to accommodate pilot with a seat parachute but then the pilot was sitting too high to freely close the canopy so the seat was modified to accommodate a backpack. Pilot had a standard set of instruments out of a glider. Additionally there was a tachometer, fuel level indicator, injection manual fuel pump and magneto switch. There was a three-point landing gear with front wheel the front wheel was steerable by the rudder and Pegas had a very good turn radius of only 4 meters. And in between the rear wheels there was a central skid to protect the propeller in case of harsh landing, but the construction of main landing gear proved that the skid was not, it, it was not necessary. Undercarriage wheels had no brakes, so it was not possible to stop the Pegas motor glider while taxiing without turning the engine off. The, the propeller had fixed pitch so it was also of no help in this case. Behind the cockpit there was an engine. This was a first post-war Polish aviation engine. It was created by Stefan Gajenski and called the XL GAD. GAD means reptile. 
and uh, this engine was a modification of engine used for power boats. Uh, Gajenski was a constructor of powerboat engines and therefore uh, he had to modify one of his constructions to propel the Pegas motor glider. This was a two-stroke boxer engine and it really was the weakest point of the whole Pegas motor glider. This engine was difficult to uh, start, it was uh, ignited by a starter rope like a chainsaw, it had problems with keeping the temperature uh, it was air cooled, so uh, at higher altitudes it was uh, it, it used to cool down too much. It also was loud and caused massive vibrations, so there were uh, many problems operating the Pegas motor glider because of the engine used. There was also no engine temperature indicator in the cockpit as the engine was air cooled. So this engine pretty much killed the Pegas, technically and politically. Here you can see some technical data of Pegas motor glider. It was smaller than average glider. The speed it achieved was comparable, uh, but uh, the glide ratio was not impressive. It really required strong thermals to soar with the engine turned off. It was more capable of using thermals as some sort of help uh, in gaining altitude with the engine turned off. On. So again, not truly a feature of a motor glider. Flight tests of Pegas motor glider were performed both by glider pilots and airplane pilots and they've had really good opinion about it. It was said to be easy to fly in the whole range of speeds, uh, which was important because this was a single seat motor glider, so a first airframe with an engine. It was also capable of performing some aerobatics, uh, like loops, tailspin and lazy 8 and even a loop with throttle down. But finally, uh, after the tests, there was a decision that it was not to be certified to perform aerobatics. It entered tailspin hardly, which was also a nice feature, one of the assumptions while designing it, as a very safe, easy to fly airplane. It was so stable that it was even called too stable because when performing a side slip with a bank of more than 20 degrees there was not enough cross control possible and it entered a normal turn. After the tests it was certified for training flights, navigational cross country flights and it was not certified to perform aerobatics. After the war there was something like three year recovery plan in Poland which was meant to recover the industry and uh, the whole state after destruction by the war. And among assumptions of this plan, 80 Pegas motor gliders were ordered to be built. Poland has rejected the American Marshall Plan. Uh, this is a complex uh, situation politically because Poland after the war was an independent state, but it was under a very strong Eastern influence of the USSR and therefore such decisions were made. When we talk of it, there was an idea to equip the Pegas with stronger, more powerful engine. The GAD engine had only 31 horsepower and to accommodate a larger 150 liter fuel tank, which would give the glider, the motor glider, a range of 2360 miles, which would allow it to make a record cross-country flight from Warsaw to the shore of Caspian Sea. But this is when the Soviets came and they said, oh no, why do Poles make such a nice motor glider? It's easy to fly, good construction, and now it's going to set a record? Oh no, you are not going to build it. And they made Poland resign from the plan of making 80 Pegas motor gliders. Instead, Soviet airplanes were made by some licensing in Polish factories. The lone Pegas motor glider was in use by Warsaw Aero Club up until 1964 when it uh, was withdrawn and given to Polish Aviation Museum in Kraków where it has been recently restored and can be now seen. This Eastern policy pretty much killed the Polish airplane industry, but when it comes to gliders, there were many more to be built, manufactured and operated in Poland. If you like their history, tune back next week to Vintage Sky. I'm Marek, thanks for watching.